Let me show you how we can fix weird color banding in the sky caused by using polarization filters on a wide angle lens. And we're going to do this in Lightroom. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. So that's our RAW file. We will be starting with the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel. And right away, I want to work on the tones. Looking at the histogram, this image is well exposed. Still, I want to change a few things. First, I'm going to drop the highlights all the way down, which will reveal more details in the highlights, especially in these three branches right here, making them just look a little bit sharper. At the same time, I'm going to bring up the whites, paying close attention to the histogram as I do this, because I don't want to introduce any clipping in the highlights. But bringing up the whites like this just adds more punch to the image as we make the brighter areas brighter. Then I also want to bring up the blacks a tiny bit. This helps introducing some kind of soft look overall, which for a winter scene like this looks really, really good in my opinion. Also, I did forget to change the profile. In this case, I want to switch from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which as you can see, will just bring up the base saturation a notch. All right, now that we have adjusted the tones, I also want to work on the white palettes. This image was shot just after sunrise during golden hour. So that means we have some golden light hitting the top of the tree. I want to emphasize this. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing some more golden tones, but I really don't want to overdo it. So I'm really, really careful here adjusting the white balance temperature. But right around here looks good. Then Let's make this shot look sharp and clear by bringing up the texture for some extra sharpness. Then I'm bringing up the clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And I'm also going to slightly bring up the dehaze just for a little more extra contrast. And finally, we will bring up the vibrance. So the colors just are a little stronger in this image. Okay, now that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare it to before. As you can see, the most notable change is the adjusted white balance, as we now have a much more visible golden light going on. And if you're looking closely, we can also see more details in the highlights. So that's a nice change. Now let me show you how we can use masks to fix that weird color bending in the sky caused by the use of a polarization filter. This is really simple. So let's open up the masking panel. There are basically two ways on how to approach this. We have this dark blue blob right at the very top of this image. We can either make the bright blue part of the sky darker and thus bring it more in line with the top of the sky, or we could make that a dark blue blob brighter and bring it more in line with the sky at the bottom of the image. Both ways do work. However, my approach will be to make the whole sky a little bit darker. So let me show you how that is done. We're going to use a range mask to be more precise. We're choosing a color range mask. And with this color range mask, once this is active, the mouse will turn into this eyedropper and we are going to select the area in the sky, which we want to change. So pretty much right around here, where all the bright blue tones are located. So I'm clicking right in here. And thanks to the overlay, you can already see where the mask is affecting the sky. It will also alter the subject. In this case, since we have a lot of fine details, we can't really do much about that. I don't think it's a big deal anyway. However, what you can also see, the top part of the sky right there where the dark blue blob is caused by the polarization filter is not included in this mask. So that is exactly what we want. We want to make the brighter blue parts of the sky darker without affecting the top. Also, I actually think I don't want to include the left side of this mask since that's where the light is coming in. And I don't want to make this area darker because that would look unnatural. So I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. And I'm just going to take away a part from the left side, just like this. All right. And once we have set up our mask, all I'm going to do is to drop the exposure until the bright area of the sky is more in line with the dark area at the top. So I think this is looking pretty good. Let me turn off this mask to see the difference from before to after. Now I still have a feeling the far right side right here might still be a bit too bright. So I'm going to choose another color range mask and I'm clicking right in here. 
and let me subtract another linear gradient so I am only really covering the far right side like this. Let's maybe rotate it a bit. And now I'm going to very, very gently bring down the exposure just to bring it more in line with the rest. So this is looking really good. Let me turn off all the masks so we can compare the difference from before with a very noticeable effect in the sky to after. And that is how we can fix that weird color bending caused by polarization filter. Of course, we are not done with the masking for this shot. So let's continue. I want to use a linear gradient for the foreground, just covering the grass right here. I want to give it more punch by bringing up the contrast. I'm also going to increase the whites, making the highlights of the foreground brighter. And then let's scroll down a bit. I want to add a bit of texture, making the foreground sharper. And I want to give it some extra clarity just to add some more details in here. This is looking great. Then I want to add some glow coming in from the left side. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to place it just above that road right here in the back and I'm making sure the center of this radial gradient lies outside of the image to get a more natural effect. I'm also making sure the radial gradient is kind of overlapping this tree right here. So we just create a more convincing glow effect when overlaying darker objects. How can we create this glow effect that is also super simple? All I'm doing is to bring down the dehaze. Let's drop it quite a bit. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. And for more brightness, we could bring up the whites. We might end up with a little bit of clipping, but I think it looks better this way. And I do think I want to add some extra golden light coming in from that side by bringing up the temperature a notch. Wonderful. Now I want to give the tree more texture, kind of to get out more details of all these frosty tree branches. So let me try this using a linear gradient going down from the top. Now I don't want to affect the sky, so what I'm doing is to say subtract and choose select sky. That's not working as expected. Still, I think we can use this mask. And how I'm going to add more detail in here is to is by simply again bringing up the texture. Let's raise it quite heavily because I really like this effect. All right, looking good. And finally, I want to add contrast between the trees themselves and the icy parts of the tree branches. I'm going to do that using another color range mask. And with that color range mask, I'm clicking somewhere right here in the darkest parts of the tree. You can see we are getting a really good selection for that. Now I want to subtract a linear gradient because obviously we don't want to include the foreground here. So let's get rid of it like this. And now all I'm doing is to bring down the blacks. And let's also bring down the shadows. Just like that, we can add some more contrast to the subject. Now that's it for all the masking that is going on for this image. Again, let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after much better. Now let's do a little bit of color grading and we are going to start in the color mixer. First off, I want to go into the hue tab. Here I want to target the yellow hue and bring it slightly down. And what this will do is it will turn all that golden light in this image into a more orange like color tone, which I think just looks a lot better. However, that's a very subtle change. So it's not that dramatic. Also, I'm going to head into the saturation tab here. I want to bring up the orange tones. I also want to bring up the yellow tones just for that golden hour light. And I want to get rid of all the green tones because there are some green tones in this image and I don't think it fits the scene. So I'm just going to drop the saturation for the greens all the way down. And I'm also going to bring down the blue saturation a notch because right now the blue tones are just a bit too much. But that's looking great. Then let's also head into the luminance tab. Here I just want to bring down the blue luminance, making the sky a little more intense this way. Perfect. Then let's do some split toning in the color grading panel. I'm going to start with the highlights. And here, of course, we want to emphasize the golden hour light by giving the highlights a warm color tone. So let's set up this hue right here in the orange range. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation here. That's looking great. Then I'm going to use the midtones and the shadows to add more coldness to this image. And of course, we're doing this with a cold color tone. 
So let's set up the hue and bring up the saturation just a little bit. And let's repeat this for the shadows. Again, we are going to use a cold hue and slightly bring up the saturation. Wonderful. That's it for the split toning. Finally, we are going to head into the calibration tab. And here I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. This will shift the blue tones more into the cyan color range, which I think looks great for this scene, but it will also affect the warmer tones, making them look a little more red. And I'm going to bring up the saturation here for some more vibrance. All right, then let's do the sharpening in the details tab. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way down. I'm going to increase the details all the way up. Then hold on the Alt key while we are adjusting the masking slider so we can nicely sharpen the subject like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done with the editing in Lightroom. That is looking pretty nice. Now I want to clean up this image and since Lightroom is already lagging again, I'm going to do this in Photoshop. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. As always, I'm duplicating that first layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. Then I'm using the spot healing brush and now let's zoom in a bit. I want to get rid of all these road signs and things besides the road. Okay, that's looking pretty clean. Of course, there is this bottom left corner which we also need to fix. I'm going to use the lesser tool to create a very rough selection right here. And then I'm just going to use the general to fill and this should work quite nicely. All right, and that's it for the editing of this image. I hope this little masking trick for the polarization sky was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.